Shalom, Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Of course, tensions in Israel, Jerusalem specifically, are getting more and more. Tomorrow, there are planned protests at the Temple Mount. Uh, the Arabs, Palestinians, are calling on major protests uh, in retaliation for Israel placing metal detectors there at the checkpoints there for the Arabs to go through. Really, it's kind of odd because uh, all the Jewish and Christian visitors going on the Temple Mount must also go through x-ray machines. It only seems that it would be fair enough that that's on both sides, especially after the latest incident of uh, the terrorist attack on the Temple Mount where two uh, police officers were killed uh, in the line of duty there when uh, terrorists actually got through the lines there. Uh, now the State Department blames Israel for the terrorism, claims Palestinians rarely incite attacks. I, I mean, I, this is almost ludicrous for me to even be reading this, that they rarely incite attacks. Uh, I've lived there. I've, I know what it's like. I've been through the into, Second Intifada. Uh, talk about rarely incite violence. That's uh, very... Uh, understatement. It's just strange to even see that. I mean, how many times we you go on the Temple Mount, especially if you're Jewish, if you're wearing any type of Jewish uh, garb, whether it be a kippah, uh, the tzitzit, etc., you can easily be uh, swarmed and, and, and beaten and everything else. So this is totally uh, a false accusation for the State Department to be saying this. At latest, Trump admin report viewed as wrongly blaming Israel for attacks. And it's very odd, too, to see that the Trump administration, that some in his uh, own administration would be making such a claim, whereas President Trump has been such a strong advocate for Israel to begin with. It only shows that there is a divide in there, and there are those that would like to see Trump out of the White House altogether. Uh, in light of this, though, also President Putin, as I uh, was speaking up uh, today, thanking Israel for opposing Poland's move to demolish Soviet monuments, uh, inside the country of Poland there, World War II monuments. That was a big step and also showing the growing strengthening ties between that of President Putin, Russia, and that of Israel. One of the reasons why, too, that I do not believe that Gog of Magog is actually Russia itself. I don't see Russia being the Gog of Magog, but the NATO force Maybe something altogether different when it comes to that. Uh, but I want to jump into our major story here that we were bringing out to you yesterday. Trump sound, uh, uh, ends covert CIA program to arm anti-Assad rebels in Syria, a move sought by Moscow. The Washington Post brought this out. Reuters brought this out as well, citing uh, unknown sources on condition of anonymity, uh, saying that this is something that the president's going to do. And... A lot of people very skeptical, but yet hopeful that this is actually the case. Well, Brett Bart News brought out this report here today. CIA freezes military aid for Syrian rebels to prevent it from reaching jihadis. And if you go into the article here, they're talking about how that the CIA suspended military aid to some rebel fighting Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad, a move that some opposition fighters believe is intended to prevent U.S. weapons and cash from falling into the hands of the Islamic extremist report, reports Reuters. So it may not be that President Trump was just up uh, and trying to stop this uh, ongoing uh, aid to the uh, to, for the overthrow of President Assad and overthrowing Obama's plan, but rather it could be as a reaction to what actually happened uh, over in Afghanistan. As we reported the other day, uh, Lorenzo from Already Happened had came out and reported that major class, clashes there with the Af uh, up in northern Afghanistan, uh, claiming, according to uh, an Arab news media there, Al uh, Imara said that 34 U.S. soldiers had been killed in those clashes. Now, that's, uh, that's their take on this. I can't say that that is true. Other reports that we uh, followed up on showed that one was a U.S. general, but yet still there is no independent reports coming out of the, uh, out of the United States uh, confirming or denying this. But we did have also, uh, Lorenzo posted another article from MilitaryTimes.com showing jihadis actually carrying U.S. military uh, rifles, such as the SCAR and the M16, etc., being carried by these jihadi uh, 
militants that are working in Afghanistan. And that may be one of the reasons why the freeze came because of seeing these weapons end up in the hands of terrorists being used against U.S. military soldiers in Afghanistan could certainly uh, see the reason why President Trump would cease that CIA operation and funding this, but it's actually a freeze according to Brett Bart. It's not a complete doing away with it, but only a freeze, a temporary measure. So, uh, and also Syria is in a tremendous straits right now in around Damascus. Uh, they have been fighting for their lives as something that's not coming out of mainstream media either. The Syrian government has certainly come under heavy assault on the eastern flank right there. Uh, they have finally resulted into doing heavy bombing campaign. And if not to make matters worse, we also are seeing now videos coming out uh, by World on Alert. Can't say that it's true, but uh, they're trying to claim that the Syrian government uh, in, in, uh, right there on, uh, let's see, it's Ain uh, Terma, which is on the eastern side of Damascus, the suburbs of Damascus there, claiming that the Syrian government is using chlorine gas. Now that's no doubt after the Washington's uh, article came out to freeze the aid to the Free Syrian Army because, as Brett Bart says, these uh, weapons are ending up in the hands of jihadists. They're trying to quickly come up with an excuse to get the U.S. to send in more Tomahawk cruise missiles and to take out Assad's government. So immediately after that report, now we're seeing again uh, more videos uh, surfacing uh, uh, on Twitter and other places claiming that the Syrian government is using chlorine gas, which no doubt is probably faked videos once again, as we have seen time and time again, never any conclusive proof that this was actually done by uh, the Syrian government nor that of the Russian Air Force, either one. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.